Energy consumption is a huge part of our daily lives. The subject of energy, recycling, renewability, efficient sources or materials etc. might have various broad categories of people's perceptions. One those who totally reject it as if it's insignificant or irrelevant. While second might tend to respond negatively or sarcastically. Third one might only be concerned with any monetary gain, as a tech expert, investor, manager, producer, seller etc. Last but least fourth one might be the one really in need, whether as a user or as a concerned individual or as an environmentalist, of course all the sensible and responsible among all categories contribute positively. Humanity has needs. Needs met by fossil fuels. Fuels being ripped from the ground and coughed into the sky, creating drought, storms, and climate change. Fuels turned into one-time use plastic, polluting the ocean and even entering the food we eat. Yuck. To solve these, we are going to have to think really big, like never before. Halt rising carbon in the atmosphere? Clean up 40 plus years of plastic pollution? Develop an alternative source of fuel? A massive where undertaking. where does all of this energy come from? Today, we gather most of our energy from coal, oil, and natural gas, also known as fossil fuels. Additionally, we gather energy from biomass, nuclear, and renewables. Fossil fuels consist of extracted decomposed organisms and plants that existed millions of years ago. Biomass converts plants into biometric material to produce energy. Nuclear energy is released during nuclear fusion. Lastly, renewable energy comes from a source that's not depleted when used, such as wind or solar power. But what's the profound difference between them? How they affect our planet? Fossil fuels cost more than what we pay at the pump and impacts our environment in many ways. These impacts include global warming, air quality deterioration, oil spills, and acid rain. It's also projected that fossil fuel resources will be depleted within the next 50 to 100 years. Biomass and nuclear energy also have similar issues. We need a solution relatively fast, and luckily, we have one. Renewable energy comes from resources which naturally replenish in our lifetime, whereas fossil fuels are a one-time use resource in the human timescale. Resources for renewable energy include sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves and geothermal heat. The best part is that we don't need to compromise our planet to harness it. It might not be just concern of developed states or nations, as most people tend to project, since most of the uncontrolled industrialization or explosive or destructive industries including nuclear, non-peaceful, pertain to them in their view, although the population might seem to be more and poorer in developing or underdeveloped countries and having no or very less contribution towards global pollution or climatic changes, yet they equally need various forms of energies as human needs. As emerging economies continue to expand, their energy needs are set to grow dramatically in the coming years. The International Energy Agency has even predicted that global energy use will increase by 30% over the next two and a half decades. The Council for an Energy Efficient Economy has ranked the world's 16 largest economies, which account for nearly three quarters of global electricity consumption. This is based on 31 metrics, spanning energy use in buildings, industry, and transportation. It includes things like the country's national energy savings goals, vehicle fuel economy standards, and energy consumed per but foot of floor space. believes he has found a way. His name is Ben Peterson, and he has spent a decade converting waste into fuel using carbon chemistry. His work has been featured on National Geographic and in Mechanical Engineering magazine. Ben's latest invention has the potential to halt climate change and eradicate waste plastic forever. He has developed a machine called WasteBot, a recycling device that turns waste into fuel and hot water. Zap your trash. WasteBot uses carbon from the atmosphere in a unique way, as a self-heating catalyst to break the molecular bonds in plastic and organic waste, transforming them into clean fuel and hot water in minutes, thus reducing carbon dioxide levels, zapping plastic out of existence, and producing an alternative fuel with no leftover yuck. WasteBot can heat greenhouses so you can grow organic food out of season, heat your hot tub and hot water heater, fuel electric generators for off-grid power, smokeless cooking, waste disposal, and much more. WasteBot uses charcoal and solar power to break down organics and most plastics. Recycle a week's worth of plastic in about an hour. The machine has only one moving part, and it consumes less power than a 75-watt bulb. Construction and initial testing just finished up at Tech Shop Chandler.
our country is really drowning in an ocean of plastic pollution. They take up to 200 years to decompose. What would you call a machine with an integrated power source of its own that runs continuously and doesn't require any electrical or fuel input? A G1, and you can see over here all the switches are off. There's no power to it. It doesn't engage if you turn the rotor. It's just, it's off. The only idea is to see if this unit will power this unit. Well, it start it from a dead stop. There's a... I'm just turning this from a dead stop position. Right now the needle is pegging the one amp point. It's kind of where I want to start. I don't want to push any more amps than that. It can do that, by the way, but you'll see that later. But uh, I just want to get it going because once it gets the rotary motion, then the current comes down like any see a difference. The regular asphalt is 116 degrees. The cool pavement, 98 degrees. Like the difference. This is Aero Farms, a massive indoor vertical farm in Newark, New Jersey. Our mission is it needs consideration by both worlds or ends, developed and undeveloped slash underdeveloped. The positive perspective of renewable energies be accepted as part of evolution, and the older sources or practices might not be blamed on any one as older version of sources or practices possible at that time progress. It might not be used as a tool of any totalitarianism by anyone against third world or developing or underdeveloped countries, yet they might be inspired, encouraged, helped by all possible means, that doesn't restrict mutually agreed trades or businesses etc. where needed mutually. Options or alternatives available or needed or utilized or possible might vary with climate, geography, echo, culture, society etc. from region to region, society to society and individual to individual, so the intensity and significance of overall emphasis to breakdown, regional or society or even individual might vary. It start from one food, leftover, recycled or fed to pets or domestic fowls or meat animal, even larger scale, hotels, stores etc., might offer food, reusable leftover, near to expiry etc. To needy people immediate needs, even unusable by human but consumable by animals might be fed to animals. Two paper stuff, reusable sold to local or bulk purchaser for recycling, unusable might be used as fertilizer directly by processing or burning. Three human, domestic fowl, pets, meat animals etc. POO or N urine can be recycled into solid fuel or N fertilizer, biogas, or N fertilizer, reusable water or N fertilizer. Four reusable unwanted clothes can be either sold to local or bulk buyers for recycling into various products or might be donated to from nearest to farthest relations including neighbors in need, even in usable pieces might be burned to fertilizer for home or kitchen gardens even just plants pots. 5. The solid items of wood, metal, iron, steel, copper, silver etc., plastic, glass etc. might be segregated, some of these might be reused in various homemade products, reusable items donated to from nearest to farthest relations including neighbors in need, sold to various outlets for recycling. 6. Organic matter, such as plants, leaves etc., where applicable in gardens, farms etc. might be turned into fertilizers or used as fuel for biogas plants or gasifiers. They see plastic or cardboard and regular trash bag, they actually won't take your trash. We got a cheat sheet that our landlord gave us. Blue bag for like newspapers, magazines, cardboard.
trash is out of sight, out of mind. Most of us throw it in the garbage can and we never think about it again. Slurry is prepared in the mixing tank. It is fed into the digester through the inlet chamber. Gradually, biogas collects in the dome of the digester. The biogas pressurizes and forces the spent slurry into the outlet chamber. And then it overflows into the overflow tank. The gas collected is let off through the pipe for use as domestic fuel. This might seem like a joke or just a dream, impossible, of zero garbage or zero filth, but even if not complete or all or major but at least most of its part is easy and possible. Yet there might be very sarcastic responses from people from around primitive or ignorant societies, probably might be lesser in educated or in developed people or societies, like they might label any such evolution or people as sweeper, cleaner, junk or wreck man, vivid, show offer, flaunt, unemployed, miser, poor etc. It might be just few examples. There might be yet other fields like construction, industry etc. as well. Often, economic conditions make it difficult for people to afford commercial products. In most cases, both urine and wood ash are available, and if used as a fertilizer, local food production benefits. This is especially true in areas like India and Africa, where synthetic fertilizer-based practices and water shortages have left an industry in decline, while the population continues to grow. You are able to eliminate all the volatile matters, all the harmful gases, and it, it is at this point that you ensure that your slug doesn't smell. It's safe for hardly uh, when you are doing, you are carrying out the other uh, processes, which is milling and uh, briquette production. Our current production capacity is two tons per month. Then we want to produce 10 tons per month by the end of this year 2017. Eventually uh, move to 10 tons per day once we have the right equipment in place. What's it going to be? Will our children live in a world full of pollution? Or should they continue the path of evolution? To learn more about a 100% clean, renewable energy future...